Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Now let's take a look specifically at the origins, insertions, innervations, and actions. Let's begin by talking about puborectalis. Now this muscle is going to have its origin on the pubic symphysis, and then it technically doesn't have any insertion because it wraps around the rectum. So to really understand this, Take a look at this picture on the bottom here, like the left side. This is the end of the digestive tract. This would actually be the rectum right here. Down here would be the anus. And so because it originates right here and loops around to the same spot on the opposite side, we'd say it doesn't technically have an insertion. It's just two origins here and the muscle wraps around. Now, in some ways, you could consider the anal coccygeal ligament right here an insertion of the puborectalis, but it's not a true insertion. The action of puborectalis is to inhibit defecation. To understand this, let's go back to this picture right here. So the puborectalis is looping around the rectum like this. And remember I said that all of these muscles are constantly contracted as long as you're at rest. And so that's to keep the contents in the rectum in the rectum, to inhibit defecation. Well, if this muscle contracts, it's going to be pulling on that rectum and kind of keeping it closed, putting some tension on it. The way to think about it is, you know, if you see these action movies where somebody sneaks up on somebody, puts a rope around their neck, and tries to strangle them, that rope is kind of what the puborectalis is doing to the rectum. It's sort of strangling the rectum in order to keep it closed. Now, if you actually do defecate, if you go and do that naturally, then the puborectalis has to relax. So actually, during natural defecation, the puborectalis is relaxed at all other times. It's contracted to keep the rectum closed so that you don't unnaturally defecate. Now for the pubococcygeus, it originates on the pubis and the obturator fascia. Okay? So going back to this image right here, uh, this tissue actually right here that is between the obturator internus muscle and right here we see uh, iliococcygeus and here's pubococcygeus, this white tissue right here is the obturator fascia. Understand it is different than the obturator membrane, but we can say that the pubococcygeus partly originates on the pubis, as you can see right here, and then partly on this obturator fascia, so hopefully you can see that. And then the insertion of the pubococcygeus is going to be the sacrum and coccyx, okay? The two things that pubococcygeus does is one, control urine outflow, and then to contract during orgasm in males and females. We won't really focus on the second one here, but this control urine flow, so again, when you're not naturally urinating, so you want to inhibit that micturition reflex, pubococcygeus is contracted. And so during rest, normally, as long as pubococcygeus is contracted, um, it will inhibit urine outflow. Okay. So puborectalis is more the defecation part, pubococcygeus is more the urine part. Iliococcygeus is kind of a mixture of both of those. Um, it's going to partly inhibit defecation and partly inhibit urination, really just by creating tension on everything. But the other thing that iliococcygeus will do is support the viscera within the pelvic cavity, um, just like any of these others do. In terms of the origin of iliococcygeus, it's going to originate on the ischial spine and the tendinous arch of the pelvic fascia. So again, if we go back to, let's do this picture right here, this muscle is your iliococcygeus. Again, we see right here it's originating on that obturator fascia. So this muscle right here, this is iliococcygeus. Again, we can see part of its origin here on the ischial spine. This tendinous structure right here, it's actually labeled on this side, these are the tendinous arches of levator ani. Um, and so that's a big origin for the iliococcygeus. It technically also originates on the obturator fascia, which is not visible here. To see that, we'll need to look at this picture right here. So remember, this was our obturator fascia right here. Again, that's also going to be part of the origin of iliococcygeus. And it's going to insert on the coccyx and anococcygeal raphe, right? And again, I mentioned its function was to support the pelvic viscera, but also contribute a little bit to each of these functions right here. Now, finally, the coccygeus. This muscle is not technically part of levator ani. Okay? It's a separate muscle, also called ischiococcygeus. It's going to have its origins on the sacrospinous ligament and the ischial spine. So if we take a look at this picture right here, 
Here's our coccygeus muscle. We can see here we have an origin on the ischial spine. Um, we can't actually see that ligament, but again, it would originate on that as well. And then it's going to insert ultimately on the sacrum and the coccyx. Now the action of the coccygeus can really be viewed better in this picture. So here's our coccyx right here. Okay? And the coccygeus is right here. Now, if you imagine the coccygeus contracting, it would pull its insertion toward its origin, meaning it would pull the coccyx and part of the sacrum, but really the coccyx more anteriorly. So if it's pulling that coccyx, that is the insertion toward the origin, so pulling the coccyx anteriorly, then that coccyx is going to kind of bump into the, the rectum, and it's going to ultimately compress the rectum. And so again, the function of the coccygeus is going to be to pull that coccyx anteriorly after you're finished defecating, or basically while you're not defecating. During defecation, the coccygeus would be relaxed, and so that coccyx would move a little bit more posteriorly to clear some space for defecation. Okay? In terms of the innervation of these muscles, they're practically all the same except for one minor difference with coccygeus. Um, the innervation to all of the levator ani muscles is due to two nerves, one of which I didn't write here. The first one is pudendal nerve. This is a nerve ultimately from the sacral plexus. And then there's also another nerve called nerve to levator ani, aptly named. And both of those nerves innervate all three of the levator ani muscles. Coccygeus is still innervated by pudendal nerve and nerve to levator ani a little bit, but it also has contributions from the coccygeal nerve. We don't usually talk about that. It's kind of rare. Um, remember, that's the very last spinal nerve, number 31. So the coccygeal nerve also plays a role in innervating the coccygeus muscle. The very last thing I want to talk about here is something called the anorectal angle. This is the angle that's made by drawing a line directly through the midline of the anus relative to the rectum. And you can see that angle right here. And it turns out that most people actually defecate incorrectly. Okay? It turns out that if you just sit or stand, but even just sitting, that's not a correct defecation posture. And so when you're sitting upright, this puborectalis muscle is putting a little bit too much tension on the rectum, and that's when you're sitting upright. Um, even when the puborectalis is relaxed, it's still, by nature of its position, putting a little tension on the rectum. And so if you want to actually get rid of that tension on the rectum, you have to squat during a bowel movement, during defecation. And when I say a squat, we're pretty much talking about the position when you see someone doing a squat in the gym with a barbell on their back. When they're in the down phase with their butt almost on the ground, that's a squat. And when you do that squat, what happens is, is the anorectal angle increases to almost 180 degrees. Not quite, probably like 160, something like that. And when that occurs, the tension on the rectum by the puborectalis drastically is reduced. And so you increase that ability of the feces to actually move through out of the anus and into the toilet. So do you have to actually do a squat like that? No, you can do what's called a relative squat. So think about when you're doing a squat in the down phase, your hips are in a really great degree of flexion. So really all that it takes is when you're sitting on the toilet is to bend forward quite a bit. And bending forward is gonna give you pretty much that same increase in the anorectal angle that's going to allow natural or at least very efficient flow of the contents of the rectum out into the toilet, okay? So in conclusion, I hope everything that we've talked about with the pelvic floor muscles has made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.